know, very simply, the Republicans back in 2016 and 17 blocked Merrick Garland as the nominee for Barack, for Barack Obama, would not allow him to be confirmed. They just swiped that seat uh, for their own purposes. And then they made a promise uh, that they would never nominate anyone for the Supreme Court during a presidential election year. And now uh, the Republicans are trying to steamroll through a nominee uh, right before an election uh, in a coronavirus uh, epidemic up on Capitol Hill. Senator, uh, no one made that promise. Just please let me finish. Uh, in, order to, um, uh, in order to have someone on the Supreme Court uh, who would be able to begin to hear the repeal of the Affordable Care Act uh, legislation in the second week of November of 2020. In addition to that, they would be able to begin the process of rolling back Roe versus Wade, rolling back uh, Massachusetts versus EPA, the most important climate change uh, uh, case in American history, uh, civil rights, rolling back women's rights. And my feeling is if they do this, if they take these two seats, then it is very much uh, necessary for us in uh, America uh, to repeal the filibuster and to begin a discussion of enlarging the Supreme Court in order to make sure that what the Republicans have done uh, does not wind up in a, in a fundamental change in the protections uh, which we have provided to the American people Mr. over the last generation. Mr. O'Connor, the word on the street is you went to the same law school as the senator I heard somewhere. <laughs> Are you for it's against law school? It's You're a, for against expanding the size of the court quickly. It's a terrible, court packing is a terrible idea. It's been discredited by everyone. Justice Ginsburg said it was a terrible idea. No one of common sense thinks that, that, that Senator Markey's idea is good. And even the Biden campaign thought it was ill-advised. So he's outside the mainstream of his own party, let alone common sense let's thinkers. Get to, let's get to Roe v. Wade, um, Kevin O'Connor. Two years ago, a massing poll found that eight in 10 American uh, Massachusetts voters, including Catholics, want Roe v. Wade to be upheld. You said you supported the, the Trump nominees, Supreme Court, Gorsuch, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh. Um, and they could oppose, uh, they could get rid of, of Roe v. Wade. So you seem to be out of touch with Massachusetts voters on that. And do you also support Amy Barrett uh, to the Supreme Court? So in terms of Judge Barrett, she's extremely well qualified and, and she's lived an extraordinary life. She is a devout Catholic and some people uh, in, in Senator Markey's coalition have tried to vilify her for her Catholic faith. Uh, but she has expressed respect and reverence for the Constitution and the rule of law. And I think we can expect her to, to follow those principles. And I think she, I, I, she appears to be a strong justice. That said, oh, okay. I will okay. await the um, hearing. I'll wait to see answer. what she has to yeah, say in response really to the answers and uh, to the questions. And I would note Senator Markey, I believe, has yes. has yes. said he won't even meet with her yes. face to face. But, but you support justices that, that were appointed to the Supreme Court because they are pro-life. Massachusetts voters have indicated over and over again that they are pro-choice. So how come uh, you support those justices who may end up taking away women's reproductive rights? The personal position of a judge isn't what's relevant. The question is, will a judge respect the rule of law, the Constitution? And that includes precedent. So, so Marjorie, we don't know what these Supreme Court justices will be deciding 10, 20 years from now. We can't have litmus tests. What we need are the best people. We need bright people who are people of character and, 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 and who have lived, have, have lived responsibly. Justice Mr. O'Connor, Mr. O'Connor, when we, Marjorie and I interviewed candidate Trump in New Hampshire, he said, we asked him if he had any litmus tests and he said, yes, that they be pro-life. So the president of the United States has a litmus test doesn't really matter if you don't have one, if he does. Personally pro-life, I, I, I don't think that he that the question has been asked as, as to what she would do on that case. I would note that, that justices have, over the course of even even recently, followed precedent. They've, they've respected the rule of law, okay. unlike okay. Senator Markey, who wants to defund our police, pack our Supreme Courts, uh, and, 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 and now get rid of the filibuster. We're, we're, going, to get, we're going to get to those things in just a minute, but I just want to ask Senator Markey, do you support the Roe Act? It's uh, up on, you do support the Roe Act. It's pending on Beacon Hill that would take uh, limit restrictions on abortions post 24 uh, weeks. And some people have called this infanticide, but I know you support it. So explain why. 
Well, I support the Roe Act because I think Massachusetts, we're only 2% of America's population, but we have to be the leader in ensuring that we are going to put on the books the protections for women so that the only decision is between a woman, a woman and her physician in terms of any healthcare decision which she would make. That should be the way in which we deal with that issue.